Perfect. Well, thank you all for joining us um, on this provider, this month's provider uh, training grant webinar. Um, we're going to go through some basic information and then we'll have some time for questions towards the end. Um, I'm just going to go through some basic housekeeping for us. Um, as you know, we are recording now. Um, that is so we can uh, provide this to folks that maybe weren't able to join during this live time. They can go back and refer to it as they have questions that pop up. Um, use the chat. We are monitoring the chat. Um, what we'll do is if you put it in the chat, I'll actually call it out so it's captured on the recording itself. That doesn't mean you have to come off mute necessarily, but I will be reading your questions out loud. Um, and then some of the chat we can do um, in the box itself. So uh, meeting materials will be um, uploaded to the ARPA grant website, which I'll have the link for you here in just a second. This is for 1.05 provider grant. So when you go to that grant website, just scroll down a little bit. I think the first one is 1.05 individual grant, which is um, part of this, but it's 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 for individuals versus providers. So just scroll down the page a little bit to get to the provider information specific to this. Um, if you're listening by phone, welcome. You can press star six to unmute yourself or star nine to raise your hand. Um, we will take um, you know, questions through hand raising as well, um, as well as the chat. I turned closed captioning on. You can adjust that or change that on the black toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Um, and information for our team can be found on um, the Direct Care Workforce Collaborative website, but I'll also put information information um, for 1.05 grant and our email address in the chat here shortly. So Heather. All right, thank you. Um, and I know we've had a couple folks join. Um, so just we'll go through it. I'll go through the slides. We're going to kind of just talk about the purpose and provide some some direction. And then we, we really would like to allow time for for questions and answers. Um, so feel free to ask questions. So we do have two different grants that are coming out of this fund. One is for direct care workers themselves to apply for a grant, um, a reimbursement base up to $500. Um, I'm putting the plug in there now because maybe you know a direct care worker who'd want to do this. Um, they are reimbursement based, which is important to understand. Um, direct care workers do have the opportunity to request some um, assistance with, with prepaying for that training. Um, it would be up to half of the cost of the training itself. Um, included with the direct care workers is training specific material for that course and then also transportation reimbursement over a 40 miles round trip. So we do have some information on that on the website. If you have questions about that, um, please let us know. And I know folks are looking at, well, what? how many people have $500 to spend? And that's a lot, right? Especially when, when folks are busy in tax. It, we will consider grants of all kinds. There's a lot of $20, $30 trainings out there that folks can do that helps build their skill level, their skill set, and their comfortability with maybe doing different things outside of their role that are available. We're happy to consider all of those. Um, and those might be better options for folks. You can apply for as many grants as you want, as long as you've closed out the other one. So you have to have taken the training, provided proof, got the reimbursement handled, then you can apply for another one. So just putting that plug out there for folks who know direct care workers. This grant is for providers or training entities providing the training to HCBS providers. So the goal is higher level work skills. Um, we really want to help folks. We know training is the burden of the provider. We want to help folks have an opportunity to think outside of the, the general onboarding training and the annual training they do to bring in some additional training that might help for a, a specific member, a specific population, um, burnout, stress. There's a lot of different things that can be used in that. Um, our, our goal here is to help elevate the workforce, to help them get some skills, help folks be able to have some training they can leverage into different positions. Um, we, it is very important that we cannot supplant. This grant cannot be, so a common request would be a uh, training that that they're already supposed to have happen and we can't consider this in the grant. So we'll kind of go over those in, in part of this, but that's you'll see us talk about that a lot because we want folks to know we cannot support supplanting. All right, on the next slide, you'll see um, direct care worker is a, is a pretty vague uh, catch all. Um, we don't use DSP. We do use direct care worker because DSP, direct support professional, is typically in the IDD world and it doesn't capture across the continuum. So we we're trying to cast a wider net with direct care worker. So think personal care workers, homemakers, life skills training, respite care providers, community connector services. So we just put, put some of the, um, the uh, specific job titles that the waiver captures here just to help folks kind of uh, narrow down what a direct care worker is. And next slide. 
what kind of trainings? Um, so the stuff on the right under yes, these are some trainings that have that grants were approved for. Um, so we're just throwing it out there showing some some things that worked. We had one agency want to come up with a mentorship for their direct care new hires. So they created a mentorship program, training for the mentor. And then within that grant, they are supporting a mentor level pay for the person to provide that mentorship to the new hire. Crucial Conversations was another one. Um, Trauma-informed care has been a couple of requests. Uh, motivational interviewing has been some requests. So just some ideas of yeses, nos. These are your um, where you fall in the supplanting category. CPR first aid, QMAP training, incident report, um, safety care, TCI. There's a lot of those that we have to look at the regs and see what, what the provider is supposed to provide. And what we might ask you is to provide a list of your trainings that you provide onboarding, and that'll kind of help us determine this. The maybes, we kind of leave blank. We we really want to keep it open for folks to kind of think about what else could we do. Um, I know that's a little hard when when you're really looking at col the middle column and saying, but we need these things. We need to get people in. We need to get them trained. Um, and we do understand that is the need. We just unfortunately cannot use this grant money for that. All right, next slide. Eligible applicants, we're going to verify that you're an HCBS waiver provider or you're doing long-term home health for the HCBS waiver members, and, and then you could include uh, CNAs and home health aides. If you're a training vendor, we do have several vendors who have won grants. They would be either partnering with a specific or a couple HCBS providers to do this training, or maybe they're just making this training uh, open up open to HCBS providers across the state. So that that um, is is really kind of if you have a relationship with a vendor and you want them to create something for this, you know, we'll entertain that and you're doing the grant or if the vendor is requesting the grant, we would just kind of want to see where that connection is with the HCBS workforce. And next slide eligible expenses. Um, there is in the FAQ. Um, all the things that aren't allowed. And so we'll talk about the things that are allowed, the cost of the training. And so this is to pay for the actual training. Maybe it's from Dr. Smith. He charges $300 an hour to do this training. You know, what does that look like? Um, the the room like what is it going to take where are we going to do this at you know kind of looking at what does it actually take for that training and training materials so those would be things related to to the training itself so maybe like with crucial conversations you generally need a handbook and there's some materials so we're looking at that um um vendor quotes would be helpful how you determine the cost would be helpful for us to understand where that looks like um another eligible expense is the wages for the staff to take the training because we already know that that could be an initial burden burden for folks is how am i going to pay my staff to take this training because i can't then bill for that time so you can include the wages for the staff to take the training because we know that someone has to be providing that services and you're paying those folks so next slide um you can apply for more than one award if you have something you want to try short term, um, you know, run it through for a month and see how it works and then apply for it at a wider scale. Um, that is definitely something you can consider and request. You just have to have it all wrapped up before you final invoice paid, you know, delivered and, and everything paid before you can be considered for the next grant. Um, so with that, I would be if you think about doing that, be mindful of the grant cycles. So we close the cycle every two months. So you could apply in March, knowing that everything is gonna be wrapped up in, well, so in April, knowing that everything's gonna be wrapped up in March, you just wanna be mindful of those dates. Um, next slide. These are the dates, right? So March 31st is when this cycle closes, and then we'll have three more cycles after that. We do uh, award announcements on the 15th of the month or earlier if it's on a weekend. So you'll know what you were approved for um, via email on that date. And then from that date, you will then, there is a grant agreement that you will fill out. And in that, it kind of outlines some additional dates. And then also with that, there's a work plan you'd fill out. So. I say that to think that if you get the award on April 14th, you you will not be able to start training on April 16th. There There is going to be probably about 15 to 20 days in between award date and 
getting everything signed so that you can actually begin doing work. So just to put that out there. Um, next slide is where do you apply? Um, so there's the website to apply. Um, you can look at the FAQ. It really has all the questions of the application. If you want to look at them and answer those sooner, um, you know, and then paste them in, you can do that. Um, you can download the budget from the link and then upload a copy. Uh, most of the time we get emails asking for access to it and what we'll do because we don't want to give people access to it because then it changes it if they don't change it and it shows it for everybody else on the website. We will just download a copy and then email it back to you. We will need a W-9 if you're a nonprofit, a certificate of good standing and a cover letter from the executive director or an authorizing official from your agency. And this is the intent of that is we know there's a lot of good hearted people and they might not be in a role to make a request for their agency. So we want to have verification that the, the folks who are going to sign that that grant agreement and put that money up front are aware of what's going on and in an and in an agreement with it. So it doesn't have to be in depth. Um, just we want to know that that they are on board with that. Um, what would be helpful to know is it is a reimbursement based grant. So we start off with a 20% upon that work approved work plan, you get 20% of your award. Most likely, if you're a train, there could be some situations where it doesn't look like that, depending if you are um, uh, maybe just opening training up for folks and don't have a good plan on how it's going to happen. We'll talk through those cases. So that that 20% money up front of the award could help get some of these things going. And then every month you'll submit a monthly report. And with that monthly report, you'll submit your invoices for any of those, you know, the expenses that you spent that month from the work plan. So that reimbursement base for 60% of it is happening through without that time. And the last 20% of the award is paid out upon completion. And we have a, like a post-training survey that we send out that's asking some overall information about the grant. And that's when the final award comes. We have, um, PCG, which is a fiscal intermediary that is that is doing the grant agreement part and they're managing the invoices for us. So they're they're a secondary source and a secondary resource to kind of help work through any payment issues there might be. So that is a real quick overview. Um, we wanted to leave lots of time for questions. Um, so please ask away. And I guess, Brooke, I'll let you start yeah. from chat if you'd like. Yeah, so we did have one come in, um, I think, around, um, you know, the supplanting question. So um, Shaylin's asking, can you direct us to where in the regs it states what trainings are required? Well, I think <laughs> if I could, I would I would be very fortunate. Um, it's really vague in a lot of the regs. What is it required? Um, this is this is a challenge that we've seen from some folks within the grant and then in a couple other ARPA projects that we have. Um, so. The best way I could really steer you on that is, you know, if the reg is saying that you have to have, um, you know, infection control, then we'd want to see that happening. If you are dealing with, um, it really kind of depends on the population. Um, if you have very specific questions you want to ask us about that, feel free to, you know, come off mute and maybe ask a specific one. I Hopefully I can answer it. I don't know. We really rely on the grant review committee and some of their expertise in this, um, but I can at least funnel it their way and get an answer back to you. So I've, my experience has been the vagueness as well. Um, I work for a PASA and so, it's not very clear what trainings are required and the frequency in which they're required. So we've always just stuck with those initial trainings and we do them annually. Um, so I didn't know based on what you had said, if you had any more information as to where in regs. No, um, I don't. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and so in that situation, Shaylin, I think what, what they would, what we'd say is, well, show us what you require of your employees now. Okay. Um, and then, you know, this would be something outside of that. If you're, if your policy is, is that they have to have these three things and it's done, these are done one and done. These are annual, these are triannual, you know, we'll ask for that. Cause then if you, if you have it in your reg saying that's what you're supposed to do, then, mm -hmm. then that would be supplanting. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And that was all that came through chat, at least. So we'll just give folks a few minutes to chew on things. 
And if anyone would be so brave enough to even think to talk about what they what they what they would like this to be considered, um, either come off mute or put it in the chat. Maybe we can kind of talk through a couple things. Um, we want the application to seem approachable and and feasible. And I was explaining to Ashley earlier, like we will reach out and ask questions. If we need it just to even consider the application complete, we will follow up and ask those questions of you. Um, and then the grant review committee could also ask questions. They might have more questions. So um, we wouldn't want someone to think, oh, oh gosh, I didn't put that in there. I'm not going to be considered because we you, you would have to be pretty blatantly disregarding the whole application before we would not want to engage in some back and forth to try to get that information filled out. All right, Dodie is asking, if we apply by March 31st, when would the funding need to be spent by? Great question. I know I did not cover that. Um, the final, the, the absolute lot last is December 31st, 2023. We have to spend this money within this, this fiscal year or this calendar year. So it can definitely end short, sooner than that, but it cannot extend later than that. I will also offer um, a monthly reporting because we want I want folks to we're not trying to drown folks in paperwork. Um, the monthly reporting is really like how's it going, what challenges and successes have you seen, have you spent money, how many people have been trained. Um, it's it's pretty short. We look at that as a way to help. Um, Look for themes, look for trends, um, highlight some stuff. Also, if there's troubleshooting that we can do or any sort of assistance that we might be able to to work with a, uh, an agency on because something has happened, we're happy to do that. We do have a, a metric for this grant that at least 85% of the individuals taking whatever training it is, um, say they agree or strongly or strongly agree that they would be able to incorporate what they learned in that training in their daily work. And so we will ask that ask that everyone ask that training in their uh, program evaluation, their training evaluation of the training recipients. Um, the other program evaluation is really going to be up to you. Like we've seen folks wanting to do um, like, oh, what was it? Like workplace safety, you know, guns in the workplace, you know, how would you evaluate that, right? So it would be, what, what does that really look like? We've had some some interesting trainings come across where people are looking at how does my work? How does my workforce feel safe? And then, and for the the consumers to feel safe. So we're really kind of um, evaluation could be different depending on the type of training. You guys are making it too easy. Not a lot of trainings. Or questions. That is all right, though. Um, we'll definitely extend the offer. If you have questions, please email us. Um, we're happy to kind of talk through some stuff. Um, we we really uh, we're still sitting on some millions of dollars, so we want to be able to push this out. But we don't say that for you to think that you have to ask for a hundred thousand dollars. You can ask. I mean, your grant could be. We've had six thousand dollar grants. It could be something very. We want this one person to come in and provide this very specific training to this staff for this reason. It's going to cost this much money. So we we invite people to look at this as what's approachable and amenable for you and what you have on your plate and what you can actually execute. I did reshare the team email um, in the chat too that you can um, save. Heather, do you wanna talk a little bit about like what the process is if folks do email that, what they can expect for response time and response formality, I guess? Yes, and so I will say that. So we, we really, I encourage a lot of questions in this because this is recorded and posted to our website. So it's technically open for everyone to look at. Um, when you email a question, we, we put all of our questions on an FAQ and update it. So there could be a two to three day, sometimes five day lag between when you ask, ask the question before it gets updated on the FAQ and out. Um, and we do it that way to make sure that we have a consistent way of answering those questions and, and that information is put out to everybody at the same time. Um, so my slight little workaround as, as letting people ask questions in these in these webinars because then it, it 
skips that process a little bit. But if you took the time to come today, we appreciate that, you know, and want to be able to ask, you know, and a back and forth is a little bit easier than an email to be able to answer those questions. If you haven't yet looked at the application, um, there is a webinar on record recording on that really walks through how to fill out the application and the budget worksheet. It is from last year, calendar year, so the budget worksheet will look a little bit different just because the calendar year has been, we, we took off the column since it no longer exists. Um, so we did pr tr try to provide some information in there so folks can kind of see how to approach it. If you do have feedback on how things could be made more clear, we welcome that. Um, we will not modify the application during the grant cycle, but we do that as soon as we shut it off on the 31st, 5 p.m. At the, on the 31st, we will make changes so that everyone in that application cycle has had the same um, prompts, questions. So we do welcome feedback on that because we try to make it, um, what I think is clear isn't always clear for other folks, so. Well, perfect. Thank you. I guess we'll kind of do just kind of a, a last call. Um, I don't I don't want to shut anybody off, but certainly I don't want yeah. us to just sit here. So yeah, last yeah. call, chat or hands. And I thank you for your time. Thanks for coming. Again, I apologize if you were in the 11 o'clock. We're going to try to figure out where the numbers got transposed, but we don't want folks thinking that we ghosted them. So um, thank you, Amy, for reaching out. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even known that that was going on. So we appreciate that. Um, thank you for your time. And also, please do plug the Direct Care Worker Grant for folks that you might know. Um, weird RBTs have been applying for that. You know, we've had a lot of different folks. Um, so I think if you can live with no, you, you can ask. And the other thing I'd, I'd let folks know is that we do have some trainings that will be coming out from the training grant that will be available to folks across the state. And we will push that out through our direct care workforce listserv. It'll also be on our website and we'll also push it out through John Barry's constant contact and his emails. So you might be able to find training opportunities in there that you or your staff could take advantage of. And so we just want to let everyone know about those opportunities. And I think my final word is, since I like to talk, is we do, um, are we're really trying to get a community of practice for providers and kind of working with the grant application. And so we do have folks from our first two grant cycles who uh, agencies that are willing to help um, how we did it, how they came up with the idea, really kind of talk about a little bit about their grant to kind of maybe help incentivize other folks or, you know, kind of have a buddy system so folks can think, oh, this is how I did it or if I ran into these problems. So um, we will be having that at our next collaborative meeting. So that's always a plug to join the collaborative and um, catch that. And with that, I will stop talking unless there's more questions. No, that is it. I'm going to drop the collaborative website um, just as a final resource for everyone. Um, and the, our email address is on that website as well. So um, yeah, you know where to find us if you need anything. And thank you very much for coming. Thank you. All right. And there is that. Perfect. Thanks, everyone.